Thank you, Madam Chair, and welcome. Uh, thank you for uh, being with us today and your willingness to serve. Uh, two quick, just uh, will you commit to work, helping me work on, on these issues? Uh, Senator Coons, Collins, Klobuchar, and I introduced, we were able to pass the Sustainable Chemistry Research and Development Act as part of NDAA in, in FY21. Uh, uh, the Office of Science and Technology Policy announced their request for information from the public on a consensus definition of what sustainable chemistry is. So uh, quick action would be good. I've just asked that we could work on this together. And if you might have some perspectives on what that definition might, um, how that might um, clarify some of the direction that you'd like to go. Senator Capito, it's wonderful to meet you, and I look forward to diving into some of those issues with you. Uh, thank you for your leadership in that area. Uh, if I'm confirmed that's an area I would very much like to learn a great deal more about and would be very happy to work with you on it. Thank you. Thank you. And we also, uh, uh, West Virginia is home to a number of scientific uh, facilities. We have the N uh, NSF's Green Bank uh, Telescope uh, Observatory in Green Bank, West Virginia. We have NOAA's Supercomputer. We also have great NASA facilities, and we also have NETL. So the, the reason I think it's important, and I think this was part of the substance of what we've talked about in the CHIPS Act and, and the um, ancillary commerce title that's with that, is um, there are seeds of excellence all around the country. And if you look at where a lot of the funding goes for science and research, it goes to six states. A third of it goes to, I think, Maryland and either Massachusetts or California. Uh, we happen to believe we have some great, I, I don't think we're ever going to be able to build these seeds of excellence in other states if we don't start recognizing, A, that the talent is there, but B, that in order for the talent to stay there, um, you have to have the encouragement, and some of that has to come from the federal government. I don't know if you have an experience in other areas besides uh, what would be considered, you know, the more highly um, uh, funded uh, areas? Have you ever done research uh, in and around the country that might lend a, uh, some helpful ideas along this line? Senator Capito, my, uh, my thoughts on that subject are informed by my personal experience, which I mentioned earlier. I was an undergraduate at Texas Tech University, and the window I got into research, because it, they didn't have a lot of research funding, this is many decades ago, mm -hmm. but that window that I got because they had a little bit of research funding was something that really opened horizons for me. And so I share your commitment to making sure, for, for two reasons. Number one, I think reaching these amazing talents that are in every part of our country is vitally important. Uh, because it's fair for those kids to have those shots at STEM jobs, if that's what calls to them, we want them to come. But also because we've got hard problems that need talents right. uh, of all sorts, and, and I think that reach is important. So I think there are a number of very practical steps. I, I, I hope there will be some really helpful progress, as I know you all are in the middle of wrestling with legislation mm -hmm. in that area, uh, but that's an area that I would look forward to working with you on if I'm confirmed. Uh, well, thank you. That would be much welcomed. And one of the one of the areas that a lot of us have worked on is to try to get um, involvement in STEM careers, both women and people of color. We're underrepresented in, in, in these areas, so I'm glad to see that this is a passion. Uh, obviously, your life's work. Uh, and and you, 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 I mean, from my perspective, it's you know you got to start early. You've got to talk about. What does it really mean? It doesn't mean you're, you know, you're sitting in a lab coat with a, uh, you know, a beaker and a Bunsen burner or whatever it is we had back in the 70s. You know, there's all kinds of wonderful opportunities, and particularly in the robotics area. How do, do you have any original ideas or any new ideas to to reach those underrepresented uh, populations that are unrep under, presently underrepresented in the STEM fields? I think, to me, this is something that's going to take a lot of different measures. Some of them can be legislative about reaching into different kinds of organizations and reaching into states that haven't had as much participation. I think a lot of this is going to happen one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, just the idea that uh, a, a young kid, uh, a, you know, a, a, a black girl who's born into a household that doesn't have a lot of resources, when she sees people who look like her holding positions where they get to do really exciting, worthwhile work, that, that's the kind of thing that really changes how a child imagines where they might go. And I think that different, different aspects of this enterprise call to different people. There are people who are drawn to the discovery and wonder of science. And I think for a lot of people, and certainly for me, what drew me was just this powerful notion 
that you could make the world work better. And, and it, there are so many problems that I think young people today really care about solving, whether it's about health, about our climate and energy systems, whether it's about opening opportunity to everybody. Uh, and when we can tie these innovative efforts in science and technology to these real changes, I think it draws uh, just a host of really important and exciting new entrants. All right, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair.